Yo, David, you smell that? You smell that? Oh smell my that. God! You have roast Peking duck, seafood combo, stuffed durian calzone. You ever wonder what a Pizza Hut, Subway, Burger King, or Starbucks tasted like overseas? Well, on a recent trip to Beijing, we found out the good, the bad, and the smelly. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another international episode of Fun Bros Food. We are in Beijing, the capital of China right now. What we want to do in this episode is actually check out all the different items that the Chinese versions of these chains have that is different than America. As you guys know, over the past 30 years, American chains have rushed into China, biggest market in the world, biggest country in the world. People really want to establish a foothold. What do these chains serve in China that they don't serve in America? Unique fast food in China. Let's go. Okay, we have made it to Burger King, China, AKA Humba Wang. So Burger King's not that big in China, but they have some aggressive plans to expand moving forward. But you know, they're not gonna be able to expand unless they deliver the goods. Right, let's see what's different here. Okay. First off, they have the Texas Angus burger. Uh, they do not have this in America from what I know. Definitely not. Okay, so this is legit pastrami. Let me taste this first. Barbecue pastrami, Texas Angus. Pretty American. After that one bite from Burger King, I can only tell that Burger King is going super hard with the burgers in the American culture. Like, looking at their menu, there's not that many Asian things. But there's gonna be items that they don't have. They do have kanji upgraded um, steak fries. Steak fries. Not bad, but just no flavor. It's noteworthy to mention that Burger King is even more expensive than McDonald's. Here, David, we have the a mushroom bacon burger. The picture looks really different from this Wait. Burger. Mushroom bacon. That's not just a grilled mushroom, that's a cream of mushroom. It's starting to taste a little bit different than I think they would do in America. That cream of mushroom flavor, definitely not something they would put on a burger in America. The burger was a little bit too, like, savory. Like, there was nothing else but savoriness, cheesiness, no creaminess. But actually, overall, I kind of enjoyed it. What I got with that were these mala wings. This is a Chinese flavor right here because this is, should be spicy and numbing mala, mala chicken, chicken wings. wings. This is interesting. I can smell. Ooh. I can smell the mala. Whoa! I like it. Yeah, hot pot right now. I mess with it. That was really like a hybrid. But if you made me say it, it tasted more Chinese. These onion rings. Oh man, these look like they're not very good. I like them. The Burger King boba. Clearly, Asians and Chinese people specifically love boba because you can get boba everywhere. Oh, this blue drink's really good. It's like a blue raspberry. Bobas are pretty firm. They're kind of like gummies. Uh, not super chewy and stretchy. Uh, milk tea, I would say, is six out of 10. Not impressed with the boba. Let's get in this chicken box, bro. There's my lot. Mm. I like this wing, though. They need to add this at Buffalo Wild Wings. You know me, I'm a big fan of the chicken drumstick. Go for it, man, that's all you. Is it better or worse than the mala wing? It's worse. Okay. But it has the same xiang la type of prickly ash oil flavor on it. Chicken nugget. This has white pepper in it. Mmm. It tastes different. I, I don't like it better. I wasn't with it. I can get why they localize for the China market, but for me personally, I can't get down with the white pepper and the chicken nuggets. Chicken fries. It might be different too. It's definitely your uh, kind of chopped up chicken, but it has like a different tint to it. It's got some more flavor. It's a little bit spicier. I wasn't impressed with the chicken box overall, other than the mala wings. It's a double prickly ash oil spicy chicken sandwich. Wow, that sauce is really good. They're leaning heavy on the prickly ash oil flavor. You guys know prickly ash oil is different from mala. It's missing the pepper, it's just the ma. extract. Yeah. For me, I am a fan of a little bit of that numbing prickly ash flavor. I personally kind of like that sandwich. Last but not least, guys, we've got the spicy chicken Whopper. They love this in China. I have no idea how it's gonna taste. Oh! Is it the New Orleans chicken? No, it's better, it's better, it's better. I wouldn't say it's amazing, amazingly decent. It's a decent sandwich. I'm very thankful they didn't go with the New Orleans style. It visually looks like it. It's got a boba dessert. There's boba in here. That's like a mocha. Coffee, ice cream with syrupy boba on top. Gotta try the pie. Fried pineapple pie. Oh. Pretty artificial. I 
wasn't the biggest fan, to be honest, of all the recipes, but I thought the quality of the ingredients in the recipes was strong. Mm. You know what I was impressed by? Because in Asia, a lot of the portions are smaller, but these sandwiches are huge. No, they're American size. They are big. Yeah, they're just like just like you would get them in America. Huge but, but, to be honest, some of the prices are almost pretty much like American prices. I know Burger King's trying to make a move on China. Like you said, it, it seems tough when they rely on mostly beef sandwiches and beef is not the thing that people eat out here. I wouldn't bet that Burger King becomes super dominant in China. No, I don't think so. I agree with you. But I'm not against it. I'm just saying, just based off what I saw, I don't see it. Yo, just get the Malau wings, okay? If you come to Burger King, for sure get those things. I would order a whole serving right now. All right, you guys, on to the next spot. We have our first unique items here at the Starbucks Reserve in Beijing. This is a stewed beef wrap. This one is a Portuguese chicken curry wrap. Right off the bat, I like the taste. Kind of a lot of lettuce though. The lettuce is a little bitter. The beef bites I did have, I really enjoyed though. Let me grab this beef bite. That is way better than the Portuguese chicken curry. Yeah. I'm not that into the Portuguese chicken curry. I know you really like Portuguese chicken curry. That is not good. The beef wrap though was good. We have a chicken ciabatta with zucchini, truffle chicken. Actually tastes like kind of like a pesto chicken pasta. That's very unoffensive. You cannot hate that sandwich. This is ice cream in cold brew with grapefruit syrup on top. Give it, go ahead, try it. Whoa, that has a very weird flavor. That's not bad though. You guys know about grapefruit, it's not like orange. Orange zest, yeah. It's like bitter. Matcha muffin with red bean, baby. Ooh. Would you say this is probably the most unique item where you're like, you will never find this? I, I think it's cool because the matcha is saucy. It's like melty. That's really good. Wait a minute. Mm. I think it goes in coffee. We have an interesting dish here. You have okra, two different types of soba noodles, and then you have a some sort of like chicken salad with mandarin oranges. David, why would they probably not serve this in America? I could see soba noodles being in there, but they wouldn't look like this. They would not have the okra. It's healthy. I'm not gonna lie, these noodles have very little flavor. In my hand, I have a sparkling fruit cold brew. It's kind of weird. I think fruit and cold brew, I'm not used to it. Ooh. I actually like this. It's not bad. I think that was way better than the avocado. Starbucks quiche. Very cold. I thought they were going to warm it up. I'm not with it or against it. It kind of tastes like a Chinese stuffing you would get during a very Chinese American Thanksgiving. This little mini pie. Look at that. It really warms it up, man. This is not bad. It's almost like a, a pulled pork. It's a cold chicken pot pie. Now, kind of wrapping this up, what were the items that most surprised you about the Starbucks in uh, Beijing? The grapefruit mixed with coffee. It's a strong grapefruit flavor essence mixed with a strong coffee flavor. Chinese Starbucks, they love fruit and coffee. In America, they're not really all about it. The local flavor profile of these chains in China is actually moving closer and closer to a globalized skin. Chinese market is also demanding more of the actual Western menu items. You know, obviously as they travel out more and they see that's what they're eating. There's a lot of people with laptops here that are working on projects in English. Right, they're actually the manager who had colored contacts, her English was actually really good. I'm excited to see the other items that other chains are offering that are localized to the, you know, Chinese population. Okay, so our next spot is Yoshinoya. Yes, like a fast food Japanese spot. Started in Japan, it's all across the world now. They got a huge menu in Japan, and they've got a gigantic menu in Hong Kong and across Asia, but the American menu only has really like four or five things on it. Let's see what Yoshinoya is offering out in Beijing. The Yoshinoya also opened up a salad chain called, it's called uh, Ye Life. Only in China does KFC have a chain called K-Pro. K-Pro is like a brand new, pretty much like salad slash healthy sandwich chain. Only serves grilled chicken, no fried chicken. Probably the easiest way to see that the way they've incorporated Yoshinoya is the chicken in the grilled chicken salad. Look at all the different sauces they have at Yoshinoya. This is definitely something they would not have at the States. They have uh, ginger, they have green scallions, they have some spicy bean paste. I think this is garlic. This is uh, sesame sauce. This is kind of almost like hot pot. The chopstick cleansers right here. Oh. This is really different than Yoshinoya, especially in the States. Let's try this uh, beef. Yeah, some beef and pepper. Mm, beef and pepper, pepper on rice, which is actually pretty classic 
like Beijing Northern dish. Yo, I'm actually really enjoying this. You know, it's not as spicy as I thought. I was hoping that the peppers was gonna give it a little bit more heat. I actually give that 4.5 out of 5. I give it a 4 out of 5. I thought it could have had uh, more spice. Pan the Majani chicken mayo. Very classic Beijing dish. Yeah, definitely better than the convenience store. Similar flavor actually has a little bit of mala to it. This okay. chicken leg. This chicken leg, I'm not gonna lie, it, it did not look like the picture. You know what's really interesting, Andrew? All these three things you can find pre-packaged out of 7-Eleven. Mm. Oh, this dude chicken leg is really good. Great. Onto the most daunting section of the skewers. The blood sausage skewer. Oh, man. Bruh. My mushrooms and fish cake. These fish balls mm. I dipped. Not bad. But we're gonna try that Beijing sauce next. Got a couple different types of fish balls here. Mm. Con Jack. I would say the most impressive part was the sauce bar. Let me dip it in both sauces Yo, did, you, did you try the fish sauce with this one that I made? Mm. Oh my goodness. This one's an interesting one. I think that's blood cube layered. Egg is very hard to pick up with your chopsticks. Rutabaker, I think. Sometimes you'll have it in the beef brisket dish where it's chopped up into squares. I would say the most impressive thing was maybe this top pot. Wow. I might have to say this cranberry side was the most impressive. This is really good. This is really trendy. The Too Faced drink. Wow. No. This Yoshinoya maintains that feeling where it's like, it's solid. Like you're not gonna feel bad eating this, but it's not the most delicious meal you can get. It was really interesting to see, Andrew, that Yoshinoya localized to the, you know, to the Beijing flavors by pretty much providing the same things that 7-Eleven might provide, but at an elevated level. Yeah. Dude, Yoshinoya out here is just like, a gourmet 7-Eleven. On to the next pot. I'm about to turn the hot pot station here at Yoshinoya. Switch Yoshinoya. This is a different day. You think people would be shocked in America to know this is what Yoshinoya are like overseas? It's like a pretty different restaurant. It's like at Yoshinoya America, they just take the two cheapest dishes that you can get here and that's the whole restaurant. While here it's like next level. You could go get ramen or noodle soups and then we even got, I think we got the most expensive thing you can get here. Which hot is, pot. yeah, hot pot. Whew, that smells like we're at a Sichuan restaurant. Oh, of course, double boba. These are black squidding jiaozis. I'm actually not a big fan of fish dumplings. At all. Nah, I... Yo, I gotta say, this was about uh, 11, 12 bucks. This is a, a ton of food. Here's the beef. Wow. Wow. Really strong. Like, just good. Fish getting there. Yo, let's toss in the noodles. I'm gonna throw in these green ones. Bang. Yo, I gotta say, and so far, this, hot this has been good. delicious. Hot pot's good, man. This is really the way to go, man. Chinese flavors, but with a Japanese format. I'm actually really glad we got this, Andrew, because I would feel weird about coming to Beijing and then just getting like, you know, like the regular shopping. Right. Damn, I think this fish is ready. Oh, man. And the raw egg, we're just going in. You know, I'm just assuming that this is safe. Because <laughs> it's Yoshinoya. Well, well, I guess David will see in a few hours. I have been kind of surprised to see in, you know, quite frequently out in Beijing is durian flavored things and okra. Durian thing really comes from this movie Lost in Thailand, man. You know what I love about this spot, Andrew, and specifically the fact that they have these like very Chinese Lao Beijing flavors in the shabu shabu format? Right, right. Is that it really allows people to like live their life the way they want, but still get the flavors that their parents or their grandparents like. Uh. Because you can't force everybody into the hutongs. It's not an international life to live in a hutong. Shout out to the people who love it. But it, that's just not the way human progression works. Yeah. By bringing the Japanese chain here and doing traditional Chinese flavors in a shabu platform, it kind of allows you to get bold. I think it's the future, not of everything. This is not like the main way that people are gonna eat hot pot, but I think it's a, it's a great way. Any chance you get, guys, this is my recommendation before we head out, is if you're out of Yoshinoya in Asia and they have the hot pot shabu shabu option, get it. surprised at how much the subways feel. Even the architecture feels almost exactly like a subway back in the US. Yeah, you know, you went to some of the other chains and they were an upgrade. The interior looked completely different. Well, they're trying to change nicer. their branding. Dude, that like picture probably came from like Wisconsin. Dude. Yo, like literally, we're back in Alhambra. It's crazy. Okay, already I can tell you the roll is falling apart. The bread, I noticed the bread is not as fluffy. No, it's not as chewy. I am trying a black pepper steak. 
sandwich china exclusive the ball of beef mala they got mala new roll soy sauce mustard in here tastes like a black pepper steak sandwich it's actually pretty good i really do, enjoy do you this. think it would be successful in the I think, market i think this would work i'm trying an italian sausage subway sandwich china exclusive what is okay that? immediately the bread tastes different how good is it i probably like yours better <laughs> You know what? Switch up, man. I really like the black pepper steak. Yeah, I don't know if the Italians would be impressed by this Italian sausage. So those chunks of steak are really big in there. So I appreciate it. That's like, that's pretty good. Really tender. Subway was fascinating because they directly poured it over their whole brand. I think that this product would be really tough to sell to anybody outside of that global citizen class. Yeah, it might even be more popular in five to 10 years. All right, you guys, that wraps up Subway. On to the next spot. All right, you guys, our next spot that has unique items only here in China is Ajisen Ramen. Ooh. Ajisen Ramen is in the U.S. market, originally from Japan, just like Yoshinoya, but they have Ajisen China. Now, the image of Ajisen Ramen in America, that's like a lot of people's first time eating ramen. No, first time it's, eating non-instant ramen. Yeah, it's considered decent, but it's not the most authentic. Would you say it's the KFC of ramen? It's the thing that brought it global. Here, they have some Beijing exclusive dishes. Let's check them out. All right, Andrew, first up we have the soft boiled eggs. I do not think you can order this individually in, at Ajisen America. Soft boiled egg. A little bit of soy. It tastes like pita. Yeah, bit. yeah. Okay, so they got enoki wrapped beef. Andrew, I believe in Japan, it would have been grilled on a skewer. Yeah. It's like pan fried. Yeah, I like it. Hit them with some mala. Mmm. Ajisen USA does not have a single chicken wing on a skewer. Yeah, Look oh at that goodness. immense amount of pepper, bro. Wow, it's actually really good. I don't know if I ever had a chicken wing that tastes like that. That's like lemon pepper, but sweet. Obviously, some influence from the Shao Kao culture. So far, that's probably the best thing I have. You guys, we are looking at two Beijing only ramens. Let's try the tomato first. first. You know, they love uh, tomato flavored things. Tomato and egg. David, that's like one of your favorite dishes to get at Chinese restaurants in the States. Tomato, tomato ramen. Do you have a couple reasons why they might not serve this in the States? It's just another broth to worry about. Ajisen's uh, crowd is not a typical, like, purely Japanese ramen crowd, you know what I mean? It appeals to they're, all different types of people. They're novices. Yeah, they're novices. This is like a beginner's ramen spot. And I think for a beginner, this might taste kind of like ketchup. Actually, I really, really enjoyed that. I give that 3.5 out of 5. We have a su tai, meaning a vegetarian one. Not bad. Would they bring this to the States? Chinese spot could like ramenize ancient worker soups. Mm. That could work. Check out this grilled fish. This is a cheap fish. It's a cheap fish, but with slits cut into it. Flavor's not bad. And that's a river fish. This isn't the most fresh skewer. Meat is a little bit like, it's been sitting there for probably at least 10 minutes. Last but not least, the yezi, AKA the coconut. Wow. Tastes natural. I don't know if Ajisen actually makes this coconut themselves, but this is fire. Fire. What was better, this or the chicken wing? Chicken wing was actually better. I'm gonna go with this. This is wow. the best coconut ice cream I've ever had in my life. All right, Andrew, this video is about American chains in China, so we're not necessarily gonna cover this, but I've eaten here. This we place, have to mention this spot. This spot is probably top five biggest fast food chains in China. This chain. is called Kung Fu aka Chen Kung Fu. Gotta have this Bruce Lee character. Shout out to Kung Fu because this is the most Chinese fast food chain. Even Dico's, the food there is not as Chinese. No, this is literally just Chinese food. So they actually have some pretty cool steamed dishes here. Um, I really like their steamed mushroom chicken. I like their eggplant dish. About uh, $4.50 US. One of these days we get a chance while we will review Kung Fu and Dico's. Someone told me Pizza Hut just came to represent an awesome place for Chinese consumers to get Western food. It's not necessarily just focused on pizza because their name doesn't mean pizza. It's almost like a Pizza Hut combined with a Denny's, with an IHOP, with a Sherry. Bread. Well, it makes sense because obviously if we're in an Eastern country without a lot of Western food, the few Western food chains that do exist have an opportunity to take care of a wider range. Be sure to let's go. Pizza Hut in China, it's considered an upscale restaurant. You can see how busy it is. There's a lot of families here. You know, people with pretty solid jobs are eating here. You can see that their breakfast menu is really different. They have 
kanji, dumplings, uh, radish cake, tea. When you're transferring a brand to a market that has very few Western brands, they saw a huge opportunity. This was called a dirty milk tea. 24 quad. Dirty milk tea forever. And if you know 24 quad, that's like uh, 350. That's expensive for a boba. I gotta say, that's one of the classier bobas, man. Whoa. Are you saying? I ain't never had a boba that tastes like that. Stop. Oh, that's delicious. And there's quite a big difference between the pictures and the reality. Yo, man. The picture looked like a legit, regular, like, American steak. Well, it looked like the steak cost like $30. So I guess I was surprised that it was only 88 quai, which is about, what, 11 bucks? Yeah. And this definitely looks like $18. Right, Anna, Anna, let us not judge. It's fine, you know what? Because maybe the flavor is out of this world. Pizza Hut Prime Rib. It's not bad. I got a funny name for it, David. That's not Prime Rib. That's Slime Rib, bro. Uh, wouldn't you say it tastes like at a ta -ta thing? It tastes like a $4 steak in America. I give the steak, I was gonna say 2.5, but I enjoyed it so much a three out of five. .5. I give it a two. I've got Six. a clam chowder cooked English style, you know, with the pastry. With the pastry. Oh, tastes like Garden Cafe. Clams in it, though. Like, not diced. No, I can see it. It ain't bad. Mm. That's not bad. Give this about a three. Yeah. Beef Wellington crust was executed pretty well. I, I thought this tasted a little bit more like something you would get at the States. This is the viral almond rice, when you slice it and then it folds over. Then, were you impressed by the presentation of the almond rice, the way you yeah. cut it? Dude, at Pizza Hut, they're coming over here, cutting your almond rice for you. Shout out to that. About the almond rice, I give that like a 3.5 out of 5. It's pretty solid. I enjoyed it. Does this food taste almost exactly like Garden Cafe in Alhambra, California. Yeah, the whole tradition of um, Hong Kong cafes is to interpret um, Western food in kind of like a affordable Chinese way. As crazy as it is that Pizza Hut has essentially become a Hong Kong cafe with pizza. David, the big dogs have arrived. I believe we are looking at the three most unique pizzas on the menu. You have roast Peking duck, you have seafood combo with the stuffed crust, stuffed durian calzone. How sure? Yeah. I actually how like sure, it. How sure. This is actually really good. This works. Because actually, if you think about it, cheese is kind of a funky, cheesy, creamy thing anyway. True cheese. cheese. Real yeah. cheese. That's what real cheese is like. So you're kind of mixing these two almost similar flavors from Fermen being, being fermented type. Um, I'll give it a four out of five. I give this 4.5 out of five. Whoa. You know, a lot of people probably feel like their taste buds would not align with a Chinese person's taste buds in China. There's some truth to it, but I think universally, anybody would think this was good. I actually think that if you just didn't tell people what it was and they were open-minded to try it, I don't think that many people would hate it. Because there's a durian funk, but it's not that bad. And then it's just sweet and cheesy and creamy on the inside. It actually tastes almost like a dessert. Here you have uh, shrimp, you have squid, you have crab meat, you have pineapple, you have cheese. Imitation crab meat. Imitation crab meat, yes. Seafood, seafood stuff crust. crust. Mm. No, it doesn't really taste seafood. -y. I was a little bit scared at first because I saw the squid. And oftentimes, squid gets a little too chewy. This is actually super good. It, it doesn't taste that different from a Hawaiian. I actually I give that a five out of five. We often talk about how the food in the 626 is really good. Sometimes very comparable, even better than China for certain dishes. Peking duck is one of the dishes I will tell you is very labor intensive. It's very technique intensive. It is much better in Beijing than it is in America. Real quick, let's break down the elements here. So you have Peking duck. You have the uh, the sweet sauce, and then you have cucumbers and some spring onions. Peking duck pizza. Whoa. They straight up replaced the sauce. Everything else about it I like, but I'm not getting a strong Peking actual duck flavor. This Tianmianjiang, I think it's modified. Which makes sense. I think it tastes a little, it's it's a two notches more towards a barbecue sauce. Yeah. This is essentially your barbecue chicken pizza Chinese version. The durian pizza was the most surprising. Uh, Peking duck pizza was the most universally enjoyable to Westerners. And my favorite was the seafood. I'll add on to that and say, to no surprise, at Pizza Hut, the pizza was the best. If people were to pay attention to what's happening in, uh, in China, I think Pizza Hut China would actually help the brand of Pizza Hut America at this point. 
because it's so much better and it's so much nicer. It would almost be like Pizza Hut Platinum in America. Yeah. If you're a foreigner and you really want to see China, come to Pizza Hut on a loop. It's just a segment of the Chinese population. But I saw a bunch of interesting stories that I was editorializing in my mind. And I think you can tell by the popular chains that we went to, like a McDonald's, a KFC, and a Pizza Hut, they don't want exactly what they're eating in America. If Burger King is exactly what they serve, and it's not good out here. They want Western things and the good parts about being the West, but they don't want to be Western. Hey man, even if you think you're at Pizza Hut, you can see that you're somewhere else due to the details. David, do you realize we've been drinking semi-warm lemon water this whole time? This is something that they would never serve in the United States. Over our China fast food crawl, we noticed a few things. Number one, the younger generation was definitely eating a lot more fast food than the previous one. Number two, the price points were definitely relatively higher than America due to them being foreign import brands in China. And number three, we noticed that even though there definitely was still some heavy localization, I think that the menus at the restaurants were getting closer and closer to their American counterparts. What'd you guys think? I think that people have been selling these potatoes maybe in China for at least as long as America's been a country. David, this is the original Chinese fast food. Yeah. OG, I'm talking about ancient Chinese fast food.